Good evening, you're watching the News at 6 with me, Shan Rasul. The News at 6 is all about the day's biggest developing stories and we'll be filling in on them over the next half hour. But first, the headlines that we're tracking right now. Budget session of Parliament to start from the 23rd of February. Budget to be presented on the 29th. The government says our session won't be curtailed despite assembly elections in five states. Karnataka government denies racist overtones in attack on Tanzanian women. Centre seeks report on the incident. Maharashtra governor sanctions prosecution of former state chief minister Ashok Chavan in the Adarsh Housing Society scam. Rescue operations intensified to trace 10 army personnel trapped in an avalanche in Siachen Glacier. Army and IAF teams battle harsh weather and difficult terrain to locate the missing soldiers. And United Nations Commission rules that WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is unlawfully detained in Ecuador Embassy, but British Prime Minister David Cameron insists that he will be arrested. The top story this evening, the schedule of the budget session of parliament has been finalized and will not be curtailed despite assembly elections in five states. This was decided by the Cabinet Committee on Parliamentary Affairs, headed by Home Minister Rajnath Singh, following a meeting with leaders of all parties. The budget session of parliament will begin on 23rd of February, focusing largely on the government's financial business. The general budget will be presented on the 29th of this month. The decision regarding the dates of the session were taken at a meeting of the Cabinet Committee on Parliamentary Affairs, chaired by Home Minister Rajnath Singh. 23rd, the joint session will be held. The Honourable President will be addressing the joint session. Uh, joint, uh, uh, <coughs> Joint session only. And then after that, we'll be having the discussion. Then we'll have railway budget on 25th. Then we'll have economic survey on 26th. Then 27th, 28th, holidays because Saturday, Sunday. And 29th, we are proposing to have budget. And then the discussions will go on up to 16th March. We will again the start the session on 25th April and continue up to 13th May. An all-party meeting preceded the CCPA meet where the opposition parties demanded that the budget session of parliament be not curtailed despite the assembly elections. In 2011, during the election of the same states, that is Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, Kerala, West Bengal and Assam, the then government in 2011 has given up the practice of a Referring it to department related standing committees, done away with that practice for one session as per the request of some parties at that time. But government was of the view the department related standing committees also has an important role and they should be given enough time. Keeping that in mind, we had discussion with other parties. They also, by and large, by and large agreed with us. <laughs> इतनी ही इंटरेस्ट थी कि जो ड्यूरेशन है सेशन की वो कटेल नहीं करना चाहिए पूरा सेशन होना चाहिए जैसे होता है मई तक और इस बीच में रिसेस भी होनी चाहिए ताकि रिसेस के बीच में स्टैंडिंग कमेटीज की मीटिंगें हों हमारे देश के अंदर ही बाकी संस्थाओं को पता नहीं है कि हम कब बैठते हैं अब इलेक्शन कमीशन को अगर हमारी टाइम टेबल पता होगी तो उस हिसाब से वो डेट्स को एडजस्ट कर सकते हैं अब इलेक्शन कमीशन अपने आप इंडिपेंडेंटली डेट्स तय करेगी पार्लियामेंट इंडिपेंडेंटली अपना करेगी और ये क्लैश इनोवेटिव है द गवर्नमेंट इज होपफुल दैट दिस सेशन विल बी कंस्ट्रक्टिव एंड पॉजिटिव अनलाइक द प्रीवियस टू सेशंस द लास्ट टू सेशंस सॉ रिपीटेड डिस्ट्रप्शंस विद ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज स्टॉलिंग प्रोसीडिंग्स लीडिंग टू की रिफॉर्म लेजिस्लेशंस बीइंग ब्लॉक्ड प्रणव गोस्वामी रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी the Finance Minister Arun Jaitley reiterated on Thursday that the goods and services tax would become a reality soon. He hoped that the opposition parties would not scuttle the passage of the bill in the upcoming budget session of Parliament. Jaitley also asserted that the government is working on streamlining the direct taxation system in the country. 
Finance Minister Arun Jaitley is confident that the goods and services tax bill would be passed in Rajya Sabha whenever it is put to vote. The Lok Sabha has already passed the Constitution Amendment Bill to implement GST, originally mooted by the UPA. GST, which is proposed to be implemented from April 1st, 2016, will subsume several state taxes and levies. It's been cleared by one house of parliament. It's being supported by almost uh, most political parties, and I'm sure others will also see reason, and this law will become a reality very soon. Jaitley also said the biggest challenge before the government is to re-establish credibility by maintaining stability in policy and consistency in action. The finance minister also said that ease of doing business has been ensured in the country and after the government amended the arbitration law, India now has the fastest arbitration mechanism in the world. And in order to establish the credibility of Indian economy, it was important that... Uh, we not only reform, but we continue to reform only in one direction. Our decision making becomes faster. The Congress has put forth three demands for the passage of the bill. If the bill gets the nod of the upper house of parliament in this budget session, then it needs to be ratified by 50% of the states. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. The Karnataka government has contradicted news reports that a Tanzanian woman was allegedly stripped and paraded in Bengaluru. The state uh, even rules out uh, that it was a racial attack instead equating it with incidents of road rage. Amid the rising outrage, the centre has now sought a report on the incident from the Siddharamaya government. Amid outrage over the incident of assaulting and stripping of a Tanzanian woman, the Karnataka police arrested five people on Thursday. The state government too launched a damage control exercise to quell the political storm brewing over the incident. Karnataka Home Minister G. Parmeshwar refuted reports that the woman was stripped and paraded, even ruling out the possibility of it being a racist attack. This is definitely not a racial attack. This is just a response to an accident caused by the Sudanese student. I don't think Bangalore has that kind of a mindset. I don't think Bangaloreans has got that kind of a mindset. Many places it has happened like that. Whether Indian or not Indian, in any such accident cases, many places we have got records where people have reacted in a similar manner. The centre has sought a report from the Karnataka government on the incident with details of action taken against the perpetrators. First of all, if an incident of this kind takes place, we have to condemn it. We should not try to defend it. First of all, whether it's a racist attack, whether stripped or not, these are matters to be investigated by the officials when they are being asked to do it. Police is supposed to act so motto in this kind of uh, uh, serious incidents. Tanzania too has written to India urging strict action. Tanzanian High Commissioner John Kijazi alleges the woman and her friends were attacked simply because they were black. There is an element of mob justice but there is an element of racism because if we are in the spot of the accident, someone passes beyond that point and you are sure he was or she was not here. Why should you go to us and attack her? It's because she's black. The Indian government has assured Tanzania of stringent action against the culprits. The incident occurred on Tuesday when the 21-year-old Tanzanian woman student was allegedly beaten up and stripped by a mob in a case of mistaken identity after a woman was earlier mowed down by a car in Bengaluru. She was reportedly dragged out of the car she was seated in when she reached the accident spot as she was mistaken for the Sudanese national who was involved in the fatal accident. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. In a huge blow to former Maharashtra Chief Minister Ashok Chavan, the state governor has given sanction to prosecute him in the Adarsh Housing Society scam. The CBI had sought sanction from Governor C. Vidya Sagar Rao for Chavan's prosecution on the basis of uh, the report of the Justice Partal Commission of Inquiry and the observations made by the Bombay High Court. The Governor had sought the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers, which advised him to grant sanction. Chavan termed the move a political vendetta against him, saying he would seek legal advice in the matter. He also ruled, down, uh, ruled out stepping down as the Maharashtra Pradesh Congress Committee President. Party leaders have stood in defence of uh, the former Maharashtra chief minister, accusing the state BGP government of trying to settle political scores. The BGP, however, welcomed the decision.
as you all aware that after the results that came in from uh, maharashtra where the congress did exceptionally well uh, in the panchayat panchayat elections has got the bjp worried instead of uh, following on the promises they made to the people of maharashtra they are using uh, cbi to intimidate uh, uh, their opponents which is extremely unfortunate congress raj mein jo scam hai usme उनके जमाने में इस पर आवाज उठी थी और उस पर पर्दा डालने की कोशिश कांग्रेस सरकार ने किया था गवर्नर साहब ने इजाजत दी है सीबीआई अपना काम करेगी और इसमें दूध का दूध पानी का पानी होगा रेस्क्यू ऑपरेशन है Uh, specialized teams sniffer dogs and special equipment have been put into use in the rescue operations to trace the missing personnel who had buried under the avalanche the avalanche hit the post in the northern glacier sector in uh, ladakh region on wednesday a jco and nine jawans are believed trapped under the avalanche the missing personnel were attached to the madras uh, regiment stationed uh, at the post the army and the iaf teams are battling harsh weather conditions and difficult terrain to trace the missing soldiers Time now to take a look at what else is making news around the country and nationwide. A gun battle broke out between terrorists and security forces in Bandipura district of Jammu and Kashmir this morning. This was after security forces launched a cordon come search operation followed uh, following information about presence of militants in the area. The Indian, uh, the Indian External Affairs Ministry fil, uh, facilitated the return of uh, an Indian woman, Gurpreet, who uh, was allegedly kept at a refugee camp in Germany along with her eight-year-old daughter by her in-laws. Gurpreet thanked the Indian government for its swift action in rescuing her after she posted a video on Tuesday asking for help. The Delhi High Court stay, uh, put a stay on uh, Delhi government's order to remove the management quota in nursery admissions. The court said that the Delhi government couldn't abolish the quota just by an office order because the decision prima facie violated the order of the Lieutenant Governor passed in 2007. BJP President Amit Shah today urged party workers in Kerala to make special efforts to woo various sections including minorities to ensure its victory in the coming assembly elections. Shah claimed that the current political climate was favorable for BJP due to the good show by the party in the recent civic polls. And here's a programming update. Uh, Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari hopes that the un- upcoming union budget will allocate more funds for rural roads. Speaking in the first edition of Rajya Sabha Television's new program Spotlight, Gadkari outlined his vision to build a parallel transport network through inland waterways. You can watch the entire show tonight at 10 p.m. In the inaugural session of Rajya Sabha TV's program Spotlight, Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari said his ministry is giving top priority to rural connectivity. Gadkari said the Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana must get additional allocation to fast track rural road construction. Rural connectivity, you are absolutely correct because uh, I am the responsible person who prepare that Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana. but we need more money for that and the situation is not good and we should give highest priority for rural connectivity so for this year i am uh, pursuing to the finance minister if you want you, ca- you can subtract some amount from my budget but give it more to the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana and probably this year probably prime minister will give the priority for that and it is really an important issue and heart of the subject and my opinion is government should give highest priority for that for rural connectivity Gadkari who is also the minister for waterways expressed disappointment over the step motherly treatment accorded to inland waterways he said countries like china korea use waterways more than road transport the waterways where we need to give highest priority there is a budget of 1000 crore and the road sector which creating more pollution more accident <laughs> they have a budget of 45000 crore and those who are creating more pollution more accident they are getting big budget and those who can save the country they are getting the less priority the, i am the minister for road and i am the minister for ports and i am the minister for island waterways everything is with me but we need to change our approach for that i am constantly pursuing that give priority to the waterways 
Gadkari, who is a key minister in Narendra Modi's government, also promised that five years of the NDA government will transform India's infrastructure. You can watch the complete interaction of the transport minister on Spotlight at 10 p.m. tonight. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time for us to take a short break. Lots more on the other side. Do stay tuned. India's biggest newsmakers. Opinion makers of the day. I had uh, two questions. India, we all know we have been having a... The focus is really on highways. They are not stepping out and say that we will do it. Indirect interaction. You can donate I, but you cannot donate vision. The lack of the vision is an important problem in the country. RSTV takes television programming to a whole new level. Watch Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari in full flow on Spotlight, Thursday at 10 p.m. Welcome back, you're watching the News at 6. And now on his three-day visit to Thailand, Vice President Mohammad Hamad Ansari today addressed students and faculty at the Chulun Lokon University in Bangkok. Welcoming the initiatives uh, taken uh, to in increasing defence cooperation between the two countries, uh, Vice President Ansari pointed out that there is tremendous potential to increase bilateral ties between the two countries in several spheres. He also emphasised the need to find effective ways to counter the menace of terrorism and extremism while affirming that India is ready to meet the expectations of its friends in the region and play a more proactive role among the ASEAN community. Yesterday, uh, yesterday the Vice President met Prime Minister of Thailand, General Prayut Chanocha. My visit underscores the importance India attaches to Thailand as part of our increasing engagement with the region. Despite, despite the large size and rapid growth of our economies, the trade and investment between Thailand and India remains modest. There is a need to synergize our efforts in the areas of economy and business to enhance and diversify our trade. India has pursued a look east policy. This emanated from a perception that our economic progress and well-being is intimately linked to the growth and prosperity of the entire Asian continent, especially of our friends across the Bay of Bengal and the Andaman Sea. And the Chief Executive Officer of Afghanistan, Abdullah Abdullah, has said uh, that if terrorism is a problem that affects all countries equally. Before leaving for Kabul after a five-day visit to India, Abdullah spoke to our correspondent Akhilesh Suman on a wide range of issues besides counter-terrorism. Is there any um, talk on counter-terror between India and Afghanistan so that the terrorist elements which might be common to both India and Afghanistan? Uh, there is always security uh, uh, cooperation is uh, always uh, been discussed between officials of both countries uh, and this will be an area that we continue to work. Uh, terrorism is a threat to all of us. It's not just to one or two countries but to all of us it's important that we uh, in, also I mentioned this in the conference that uh, regional cooperation and regional action plan to deal with the threat of terrorism is important. Um, uh, the fact that uh, uh, attacks had taken place in Afghanistan earlier than uh, than uh, than uh, uh, Mazar Sharif as well. Uh, we continue to face this uh, challenge, and we will continue to deal with it when it comes. Uh, in your meeting with Fiki and CIA, I, I think that you have also met their representative this time. Yeah, yesterday I met with so, uh, so is there all three of them. Potential between the two countries, given there the situation, that security is very big problem. There are uh, uh, great uh, security, uh, economic potentials uh, between uh, both countries for the uh, investment uh, businesses, uh, joint venture, uh, and uh, all aspects of it, trade and transit I mentioned earlier as well. The opportunities are there. Uh, and uh, security and development uh, are interlinked. Uh, one cannot wait for the security to be uh, security challenge to be 
addressed and then start. So what is the response the, of uh, Indian businessmen on that? Uh, they, they, are, they are forthcoming. They are forthcoming and they, are, uh, they have already made investment in Afghanistan. They have already made overtures in Afghanistan. They are partnering with Afghans in businesses. Uh, and uh, this uh, has happened in the past and they will continue to do so. Uh, we assure them of our support for creating the enabling environment uh, for uh, business and, uh, and uh, industries to work together. And what has come as a huge relief for WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, a United Nations panel has ruled that he was unlawfully detained in the Ecuadorian embassy. Despite the UN ruling, a spokesperson for British Prime Minister David Cameron said Britain will arrest Assange if he leaves the embassy. Early in 2014, Assange had complained to the UN that he was being arbitrarily detained in the Ecuador embassy as he could not leave without being arrested. The UN's working group on arbitrary detention will announce its findings of the investigation later on Friday. Assange claimed asylum in London's Ecuadorian embassy in 2012 to avoid extradition to Sweden over sexual assault claims. He denies all allegations against him. After the UN ruling, he wants the arrest warrant against him to be dropped. The United Nations today suspended the Syria peace talks in Geneva. The move comes as the Syrian forces closed in on rebels in Aleppo. However, the UN envoy said negotiations had not failed and they would resume on the 25th of February. As usual, both warring sides played blame game over the suspension of peace talks. Failure, yes, there is a failure. It's a failure of everybody except the government of the Syrian Arab Republic because we responded uh, positively to the invitation. Mudslinging between the Syrian government and the opposition as peace talks remain suspended. Both sides now say they will consider whether to return to talks which the UN plans to resume on February 25th. We did it twice. Every time he called on us, we responded positive and we went to meet with him. While the others arrived six days late, later, uh, late uh, and they refused to engage with him at the Palais des Nations. Those who have the, the, the responsibility of this failure are the Saudis, the Turks and the Qataris. They are the real handlers and, and masters of the Riyadh uh, group. The UN decision came after the Syrian army, backed by Russia, advanced against rebel forces in north of Aleppo, disrupting humanitarian aid from Turkey. However, the UN envoy is optimistic. He said talks haven't failed as he sought immediate international support led by the United States and Russia. Russia, meanwhile, came under sharp criticism from the US and France for its military intervention in Syria. From the first day, I've indicated that I'm not prepared to hold talks for the sake of talks. And the Secretary General has saying the same. And therefore, I've been asking and will be asking for the ISFG to convene as soon as possible, hopefully already in Munich, the Security Council to meet, and we reconvene in Geneva again on the 25th of February. On the ground in Syria, the war rages on. But there is a ray of hope as world leaders arrived in London for the Syrian Donors Conference. It is a one-day London conference aimed to tackle the dire humanitarian needs in Syria. Britain and Norway pledged to spend an additional $2.9 billion in aid by 2020. At this summit, many people will talk about the 1.4 million children who are uh, out of school in Syria who have become refugees. And uh, it is important that we hear from these children, from these young people of Syria in their own words. Over the past two days, eight convoys have delivered much needed humanitarian aid to several Syrian towns, a temporary relief for Syrians from starvation and death. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time now for all the sports action in Sports Beat. Indian hockey team uh, captain uh, Sardar Singh rubbish claims of sexual exploitation made by a British woman. Sardar Singh said he never exploited her on the pretext of marriage. Speaking to media in Chandigarh, Sardar said that they met through Facebook during the London Olympics while calling allegations against him inappropriate and false.
Hockey India is planning to file a civil and criminal defamation suit against former cricketer Kirti Azad and suspended BJP MP. Uh, Hockey India says his allegations tarnished organization's image and made it difficult to get sponsors for the team. Barcelona handed Valencia a humiliating defeat in the Copa del Rey semi-finals first leg at the Nou Camp. Luis Suarez scored four goals while Lionel Messi scored a hat-trick as Barcelona scored seven goals against their opponent. Uh, the return leg will be played at uh, the Mestia next Wednesday. Cricket Australia on Thursday banned yet another female cricketer for six months for placing bets on a men's test match between Australia and New Zealand. 19-year-old cricketer Pepa Cleary, contracted to the first coaches in the Women's T20 Big Bash League, received a further 18-month suspended sentence after admitted placing bets uh, totaling 15.50 Australian dollars on the third test last November. Well, that's all from us. Goodbye.